Hey guys, how are you? This is Shannon, your clinical educator from the cardiovisual team. Today we'll be having another CV Health Talks uh, with Dr. Anand Prasad. Hey Dr. Prasad, how are you? Doing good, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we'll be discussing uh, AKI in the cath lab with Dr. Anand Prasad on CardioVisual, your trusted source for all things cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Uh, so before we get started, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a background about Dr. Prasad and his amazing work. Uh, so he's currently a professor of medicine, director of the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory at the University Health System, and director of Interventional Cardiology Fellowship, assistant director of cardiology clinical operations at UT Health San Antonio. His clinical interests are centered on endovascular treatment of PAD, TAVR, percutaneous ventricular support devices, and high-risk percutaneous coronary interventions. Dr. Prasad is prolific in his publications and research uh, relating to kidney health and other clinical and healthcare topics. So to start, can you give us a clinical description of what contrast-induced acute kidney injury is and why it's an important issue to be recognized in the cardiac cath lab? Sure. Uh, basically, worldwide, we're doing more and more complex procedures on patients, whether it's heart disease, peripheral vascular disease, valvular disease. And these procedures require contrast dye. In addition, they uh, are very complicated in terms of the effects they have on a given person's blood pressure, heart rate. Uh, and so all of these issues coalesce together and really increase the risk of uh, kidney injury uh, during these procedures. And that can have profound effects on the patient uh, moving forward. And how is contrast-induced AKI detected or diagnosed? So uh, traditionally, we use the serum creatinine level, and we look for absolute and percent relative changes in the creatinine level before and after a uh, procedure is performed. And despite limitations, the creatinine level remains our best biomarker in, uh, in the cath lab or in the hospital for detecting uh, AKI. And in terms of physical symptoms, I know that we look at labs. Do patients tend to experience uh, any symptoms with kidney injury? So many people feel like uh, AKI is uh, very quiet, it's indolent, it really doesn't occur. The reality is AKI does lead to symptoms. And the most common reasons for patients who have AKI to get readmitted back to the hospital is for myocardial infarction and for uh, heart failure. So heart failure is actually one of the most common reasons why someone who develops AKI after a procedure might be readmitted. And obviously, heart failure has uh, multiple symptoms of dyspnea, congestion, and, and profound effects. So uh, AKI is not completely asymptomatic. And generally speaking here, what is the prevalence of kidney disease in AKI? Yeah, so, you know, kidney disease is growing. Uh, I, I think there's a lot out there, and I think most people watching this realize that we're seeing a, uh, a pandemic, uh, I hate to use that word, of diabetes, obesity in, in uh, modern uh, developed countries. Uh, the populations are often getting older, and all of these are coalescing. If you look at the United States, about 40% 40, 40 of uh, people above the age of 65 have chronic kidney disease. And uh, that uh, prevalence is expected to rise across age groups uh, as we see more and more diabetes. So when you translate that to your population of patients coming to the cath lab, you're going to see a lot more older patients with chronic kidney disease. Uh, and when you look at clinical trials, anywhere from uh, 20 to 40% uh, of patients have some form of chronic kidney disease. So it's very common. And if we want to narrow this down more specifically, what percentage of patients presenting to the cardiac cath lab are at risk for having an AKI post-event, post-procedure? So a lot of that depends on what procedure you're doing, your local demographics. But, you know, about a third of your patients uh, will have uh, a obvious 
risk of kidney injury. So they may be diabetic, they may have pre-existing uh, at least stage three chronic kidney disease. And then you add the subset of individuals on top of that who are getting complex PCI, who are going to need a lot of contrast dye administered, who might be hemodynamically unstable. You have the STEMI population. Uh, so it's very easy to look at your cath lab schedule and say, you know, about half of my patients probably will be at risk for some form of kidney injury. What about uh, certain medications that may place a patient at risk? Sure. So, you know, you have the usual suspects, uh, nephrotoxic agents like uh, non steroidals, antibiotics, uh, chemotherapeutic drugs. Uh, there are other agents which we associate it with acute kidney injury, but are actually probably beneficial, certainly in, in, in the long term or in the chronic use, things like ACE inhibitors, ARBs, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, appropriate use of diuretics. Uh, these, uh, you know, drugs are, are uh, you know, helpful when you look at the bigger picture uh, of these patients. Uh, but the acute toxins are, are the typical ones that we worry about. And anatomically speaking, do kidney stones um, re or maybe a tumor, let's say, put a patient at a greater risk? No, so absolutely. Uh, you know, there is a, um, a large number, there are a large number of people in South Texas, for instance, where I practice, uh, who are uh, developing or being diagnosed with renal cell carcinoma. It's, it's a large uh, population. And in fact, when we jump down to uh, talking about cardiorenal connections, one of our focus areas this year is brand new. It's going to be on uh, cancer. Uh, so the relationship of uh, uh, kidney disease and, and cancer. So, uh, you know, patients who have uh, cancer often have chronic kidney disease as a coexisting problem. Uh, those who end up losing a kidney or, or large part of their kidney may have a decline in their uh, GFR. So, uh, you know, renal cell carcinoma patients are at risk for uh, AKI, and they often need studies, right? They need CT scans, they need other imaging studies. Uh, they often go through large surgeries uh, that are hemodynamically challenging. So, uh, mm -hmm. kidney, kidney uh, injury is, is an issue with, uh, with renal cell carcinoma.